Hi, I'm Paul Duchenko, and this is the fourth of my series of short videos on spatial cognition. In this video, I will describe place cells. These are neurons, initially discovered in the brain of the rat, which fire when the animal occupies a specific location. They are much like a you are here indicator. The story of place cells actually links to another larger story, that of the hippocampus and amnesia. I'll describe this story first and then describe place cells. In 1953, a patient by the name of Henry Meliason, previously referred to by his initials, HM, underwent an experimental surgery to treat his epilepsy. The surgery was a success in some ways in that the incidence of his seizures decreased. But it was a tragedy in another way. Following the surgery, Mr. Meliason was unable to form new memories. That is, he had anterograde amnesia. This photo is a, from a recent book by Suzanne Cor Corkin, a neuropsychologist who studied uh, Mr. Meliason over several decades. The type of memories that Mr. Meliason had difficulty with were what we call everyday or declarative memories. For example, if you were to ask me what I had for breakfast this morning, I would be able to tell you. I had some wheat flakes with bananas and nuts. If you'd asked Mr. Meliason what he'd had for breakfast, he would have been unable to answer you. He would be unable to remember what he had for breakfast. The brain area which the surgeon removed in Mr. Meliason was the hippocampus and likely the adjacent overlying cortex. This fact spawned an intense interest in this brain region. Might the hippocampus be the site where memories are acquired? To address this, researchers began studying the hippocampus in other animals. One of these animals is the rat, which, like the human, has a hippocampus. One experimental approach the one was to remove the hippocampus, and when this was done, researchers have found that rats tended to lose their way in, ma in mazes. They tended not to be able to recognize where they were. The approach that I want to focus on, however, is that which I described in the previous video, recording from neurons directly. This is a picture of a slice of the rat brain. It's a slice about halfway back. The dark outline near the top of the picture are the cell layers of the hippocampus. In the 1970s, researchers implanted recording electrodes, thin wires, into this structure, the hippocampus, and listened to the firing of individual neurons as the animal wandered around small enclosures. When they conducted these recordings, they made a remarkable discovery. What researchers discovered when they began recording individual neurons in the rat hippocampus was that individual cells fired in specific locations within the arena that the rat was running around in. I have an audio of a recording of a place cell in my lab, which I'll play for you now, and what you'll hear are the pops, which are individual spikes of an individual cell. You'll hear that there's clusters of pops, and that's when the animal's in one location, and then there is relatively silence, or relative silence, which indicates the animal is not in this location where the cell likes to fire. So let's give it a go here. This is the animal running around. He was in this place field. Now he's moving around. He's about to come right back into it. He's moving away now. So the cell is firing when the animal's in one location. And the animal's in other locations, as he is now. There's no firing. He's moving back in right now. So this is a demonstration of a place cell in the rat hippocampus. Each individual place cell fires typically in a single location, and different, fire, different place cells fire in different locations, such that you have a representation of the entire space that the animal is occupying. 
So if you had a rat running around in a cylindrical en enclosure, uh, and then, then you were to plot the number of pops that you heard, as you heard in the video, uh, with warmer colors indicating higher numbers of spikes or pops, you'd see that the cell fires in one specific area, and the blue indicates where the cell does not fire. So there's kind of a heat map here, a concentration of firing in one location. If you were to record from another neuron, it would fire in a different location, and so on. The idea, the observation of place cells, gave rise to the, the notion the hippocampus is a structure which comprises a cognitive map. A cognitive map is an internal representation of the outside world. And in their influential 1978 book, John O'Keefe and Lynn Nadell, uh, based on the observation of these play cells, uh, which are cells that fire in specific locations, as you heard, um, argued that the hippocampus has an overall map of the outside world that the animal can use to navigate. One thing to note about these place cells, again found in the hippocampus, is that the structures, the brain areas which project to them, contain head direction cells, the cells that we talked about in the last video. And we'll tie this together in our next video. Okay, so what have I told you? I've described place cells, which are neurons whose firing is tuned to specific locations in the rat or a mouse's environment. Different place cells uh, fire in different locations. And finally, place cells in the hippocampus likely receive inputs uh, from the cells that we talked about in our last video, head direction cells.